I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. We've got a trick tutorial for you today, except it's not really a trick so much as it is a technique that every really good pilot needs to have in their arsenal. It's kind of like how to master the yaw axis. Stay tuned. A long time ago, I did a series of videos about Betaflight's camera up-tilt compensation feature. This is a feature that automatically coordinates turns for you to compensate for your camera up-tilt. Now, that sentence didn't make sense if you don't know what coordinating a turn to compensate for camera up-tilt is. Well, you should probably just go watch those videos. I'll link to them. I'll put a card in the upper right and a link in the video description. The gist of it is that when there's up tilt on the camera, you need to use roll and yaw together in various amounts, depending on how much up tilt you've got, to keep the horizon where it needs to be while you're turning. Now, if that was all there was to up tilt compensation, it wouldn't be a very big deal because most pilots without too much trouble learn to coordinate turns just fine. But the place where up tilt compensation becomes really interesting is when you're doing snap rolls and loops and things like that, well, not loops, but r r rolls, barrel rolls, snap rolls, that kind of split S's, anything where you're rolling on the r roll axis. Right, obviously. Because when you're going quick like that, it can be hard to know how much roll to add in to compensate for that. And uh, I'm just gonna show you here with my hand held, right? If you're flying, if you're, if you're hovering like this, right? And you roll, the camera will make a kind of a cone shape in the air, right? That's fine. But usually you're pitched forward like this. And when you roll, watch what happens if here I'm just pitched forward perfectly level and I do a snap 180 roll. Do you see that you're staring down at the ground? I've rolled the copter along its own axis, but because the axis is pitched forward when you flip over, you're staring at the ground. And that can, that can be undesirable. Well, you can coordinate that out by hand, and I'm gonna show you how. And when you add it, you're gonna get a lot more flexible and a lot more comfortable with that left stick and the yaw axis. Let's, let's see some flight examples. So what I'm gonna show you first here is, uh, we're just gonna, you're just gonna do some snap rolls. And what I want you to see is as I punch out and then roll, I'm looking down at the ground as I finish the move. Here, I'm gonna do it again. I haven't done anything to, on the pitch axis, it's just that because I'm pitched forward already, because of camera up tilt, I end up looking straight down at the ground when I do the 180 roll. Let's take a look at how that looks with uh, some split S's. Again, as I come over here, I'll roll, and I'm looking straight down at the ground. And that kind of short circuits the end of the split S. You kind of don't see it smoothly come over. It just may not be what you want. Now, in order to fix that, you can cross-coordinate that snap roll, and you do that by moving the two sticks opposite direction from each other. So, uh, when you when you coordinate turns normally, you move the sticks the same direction. So, if you're if you're turning left, you move the roll stick to the left and the yaw stick to the left, and that creates a turn well, just like this one. Well, in order to cancel out the effect of up tilt, you can do this. You move the sticks the opposite direction, and that sort of negates the effect of up tilt on the roll, it makes it seem like the camera's flat. Here's another one. And you can see that when I did that 180, I ended up looking straight at the horizon. I didn't end up looking down at the ground. Here's again, see? I stay looking at the horizon instead of, as I roll 180, ending up uh, looking down at the ground. And there you go. So there's the one without and one with. And now I'll show you a split S doing the same thing. And you can see it, it's a little subtle, it's a little hard to you know explain exactly what it does, but it definitely changes the split S from sort of snapping over and looking straight down to sort of rolling over more smoothly. And that well, was a little rough. It's a, it was a little, I haven't, uh, I'm a little out of practice on these. It was a little bit rough exiting that move, but I think you get the gist. So then the question that I'm here to help you answer is how can you start working this into what you want to do? And the answer is pretty simple. Well, first of all, doing it for snap rolls, that's an advanced move. Coordinating snap rolls, uh, because if you put the wrong amount of yaw in, 
you don't get the results you want. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So now I'm gonna do some more and I'm gonna try to put in too much yaw. I'm gonna overcompensate. And that's not necessarily right or wrong, it just makes a different move. But you'll see, when I put in too much yaw, it looks really weird and unexpected. That was actually not even, let me put even a little more in. Hold on, that one actually didn't look as bad as I kind of wanted it to. Yeah, so you see how that one was kind of like an outside cone? It stopped, we stopped negating the up tilt and we're actually sort of, well effectively, we're kind of putting in down tilt, if that makes any sense. And it's just not what you're really going for. If we look at a split S here, you'll see that I put in so much yaw that it kind of actually took me out of the split S. I ended up almost leveling out. Here, I'll do it again. Now, I'm not doing anything different with roller pitch. I'm just putting in a ton of yaw, and, and it's having this weird, unexpected effect. Now, that is something that you could use to your advantage, that you could use to create interesting aerobatic moves. But at least in the beginning, it's just not what you want because it's so weird and unexpected. You get yourself in trouble. So the point is that if you put in not enough yaw to cross coordinate your turn, you're kind of not doing anything different than if you hadn't, is what you were doing before. You're just doing a snap roll with no coordination. But if you put in more yaw than you really needed, you're gonna turn that roll into some other kind of move that you may not be expecting and, and get yourself into trouble. So what I wanna suggest that you do is as you do uh, rolls, just do some slow barrel rolls or split S's. As you do them, just add a little bit of cross coordination with the yaw stick until that will, it'll start to become natural to just add a little bit of it and sort of level out those rolls so you don't get that flipped upside down feeling. Let me show you what I mean. So here I'm gonna go fly and I'm just gonna do some slow rolls. Don't do snap rolls in the beginning, rolls, split S's. And as I do them, I'm just gonna input the smallest amount of opposing yaw. So if I'm rolling left, I'll yaw right and vice versa. Just do the moves that you normally would do and just add the tiniest amount of opposing yaw just to start to get a feel for what it's like to cross coordinate that. And eventually as you do that, that will start to become a part of your muscle memory and become more natural and, and that's then you'll be mastering the yaw axis that I talked about at the beginning. Here I'll do some split S's, same kind of deal. Just add a little bit. It'll be a little weird at first, I think with split S is more so than rolls, because it really changes the way you move through the split S. If you add a little too much, it's, uh, you'll, get, you'll get used to it. Don't go crazy, just add a little bit. Less is, more, is better than more at the beginning. And, and you can see now I'm going a little faster, you can start to get to the point where maybe you can do faster moves or even snappy rolls, while still your muscle memory will get you to the point where you can cross coordinate that sort of intuitively. Now I'm gonna show you some, just this is just random freestyle. And I want you to specifically look for times when I'm cross coordinating, when the sticks are pushed opposite of each other, either inwards or outwards, yawn, yaw, and roll. In this move, I want you to see that uh, here I'm doing a normal right turn with normal coordination, sticks push the same direction, and now I'm gonna transition to a, a cross-coordinated left roll simply by leaving the yaw stick where it was when I entered the roll. So the roll stick transitioned from roll right to roll left, the yaw stick stayed where it was. Here it is again at normal speed. Here's a much faster roll, but notice as I cut the throttle, I push the yaw stick in the opposite direction of roll. And that's something I've just learned to do with practice and shows that it can be done even on the faster rolls.
The split S that I do over this tree is not cross-coordinated, and notice how it has a little bit of a different look. For that one, the yaw stick was centered. For this move, cross-coordination is a great way to keep the ground spiraling more around a central point instead of making sort of a cone-shaped outward-looking uh, spiral that, that doesn't look as clean. That's going to do it for this little tutorial. Uh, the gist of it is, number one, understand that cross-coordinating rolls is a thing. I have videos on that if you don't really grasp that concept. Number two, begin to add some cross-coordination to your roll moves. Just add a little bit, and if you start a sort of a slow roll or a split S and you haven't thought of it, just push a little bit of it in and feel how that changes how the move works. Eventually it actually opens up a whole new area of creativity for you to sort of come out of, I mean when you do a split S, you're always going to exit a split S sort of 180 to the direction you entered it, but it adds a whole lot more flexibility to do all kinds of different moves to exit in unexpected directions that people aren't used to seeing. And really, I think when you look at some of the really masters of freestyle flying, guys like Johnny FPV, for example, they really have a grasp of their yaw axis in a way that beginners don't. Beginners just use their yaw axis to turn, and that's pretty much it. But masters use it to coordinate and change the way that you enter and exit turns. Uh, and this is the first step in that. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying.